Name for the record, please. Pharrell William. What um, is More Water from Nazareth Publishing? What is that company? Um, my publishing company. Um, did you answer any written questions that were served upon you by known and Frankie Gay? Yes or no? Are those the questions that... There's no objection. Uh, yes, I answered a bunch of questions. Okay. Verbally, in writing, how? Uh, verbally. Okay. When you say you answered a bunch of questions, can you remember any of the questions that you answered? There was a myriad of ludicrous questions, I'm sorry. Really? What do you consider ludicrous questions? Tell me one question that was asked of you that constitutes a myriad of ludicrous questions. It was just ludicrous. Tell me what they were. I don't know. Do you remember ludicrous things? Chris, Tell me one question that was asked of you that you consider to be ludicrous. I, I don't just, you know what, when I see nonsense, I try not to waste my memory for it. Okay. I want to know one question that was asked in our interrogatories that you consider to be a, within the myriad of ludicrous questions you were asked to answer. I'm telling you no. So what I want to know is, what do you technically mean by bluegrass pentatonic harmonies? Usually in bluegrass, they use a certain they use a certain chord structures, um, certain chord progressions, and so I just did what comes naturally to mind. What chords do they use exactly? You should check it out. No, I'm asking you the question. You just said that in bluegrass they use certain they chords, and I'd like to know what chords they use. I'm not a teacher. Well, you just said that you that that's what they do. I, know, I told you what I do. Okay. What chords do they use in bluegrass? You should check it out. Okay. Do you know what a blues chord structure is? There's so many of them. Tell me. It's subject to interpretation, one's, in one's interpretation. Okay. Does Blurred Lines use a blues chord structure? No. What are the chords in a 12-bar blues? I'm not here to teach you music. Okay. Yeah, please answer my question. I'm not here to teach you music. You're going to have to answer my question, sir. I'm not a teacher. So does the answer, does, is the answer that you don't know? Is the answer you don't know? I don't know. You don't know? I don't know. Okay. Um, have you studied, um, but you have not received any college uh, formal education with respect to music, correct? No, sir. Okay. Can you read musical notation? Mm hmm. You can? Mm hmm. Is that a yes? You have to answer verbally? Yes, sir. Okay. Can you write in musical notation? No. Can you read um, pitches in musical notation? No. Go to page nine of Ms. Finnell's report that I placed in front of you, please. Page seven, I'm sorry. Page seven, not nine. Mr. Williams, page seven, not nine. Oh. Um, if you look on page 7, you're going to see a transcription, um, which are examples 2A and 2B. What are the names of those notes? I mean, I know every good boy does fine in face, but um, what is the duration of those notes? I'm not comfortable. So you can't answer the question. Yeah, I'm just not comfortable. You have to. You have to answer my question, so with all due respect. I'm giving you my answer. Okay. I'm just not. not I'm not comfortable. I'm not asking if you're comfortable or not. What I want to, to tell me is, can you tell me the names of those notes and the duration that are depicted on examples 2A and 2B? Mm -hmm. What are they? I said I'm not comfortable, sir. So does that mean you can't you can't answer my question? I can't answer you at this time. Okay. Turn to page 11 of um, Ms. Vanell's report, please.
Can you please tell me on page 11? Page 11, not 10. The names of the notes that are depicted? Yeah, I'm not comfortable. Okay, so the answer is you can't answer the question. The answer is I'm not comfortable. Okay, so you can't, yes or no, can you identify the names of the notes, yes or no? I'm not comfortable. What I want to know is can you identify the names of those notes? I'm giving you my answer. Yes or no, can you I'm do it? I'm not comfortable. So you're refusing to answer my question? I'm not refusing, I'm giving you as much as I can give you. Okay. Can you identify the names of the notes that are depicted on page 11, the charts represented on page 11? I'm not comfortable. Okay. Is that is that going to be your answer to any question that I ask you? If I were to ask you to identify names of notes? I don't know. Okay. I'm just asking you whether you can read notes. And you told me you could, and I'm asking you to identify the notes right. that are shown. Right. And you can't do it, can you? I'm not comfortable. Okay. And that's because you actually can't read musical notes, can you? I'm not comfortable. You re refuse to answer the question? I'm not refusing anything. Okay. Are you going to answer my question? I just told you, sir. Meaning you're, I'm not comfortable. Is it your testimony that you and Mr. Thick never once during the creation of Blurred Lines spoke about, discussed, referenced um, the song Got to Give It Up by Marvin Gaye? I did not go in the studio with the intention of making anything to feel like, uh, to sound like Marvin Gaye. Mm -hmm. Did you ever, ha did the thought, did the, did, Marvin Gaye's Got to Give It Up ever cross your mind at all, at any time, while you were creating Blurred Lines? No. Mr. Williams, this is an um, interview that you gave, um, and um, I'm going to read um, what is stated here, and I want to just ask whether this is an accurate recitation of what you said in the interview. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Question by XS, XXL was one of the biggest things in production is always sampling. You'd gotten into a little bit of an issue with blurred lines in Marvin Gaye's estate. Did you see the similarities in those tracks? How did you deal with that fallout? This is what they quote you as saying. Well, listen, I have the utmost respect, the most utmost respect for Marvin Gaye and his music. And he is one of the patri patriarchs. He is one of the best. But here's the thing, you can't trademark a groove. If I play a song, which a lot of my new hip hop rap records are, that's done in six, eight time signature. Charlie Parker's family is not going to sue me for that. Do you understand what I'm saying? If I do a salsa beat right now, I know that Ricky Martin's family is not going to come looking for me because that's what we're dealing with. We're dealing with the idea that someone feels like a groove is proprietary and it's not. Music is, and the notes are, and when you look at the sheet music, then you know. And just for a bit of humor, the percussion that I used in Blurred Lines, aside from the music notation being completely different, completely different, the sheet, sheet music is available online, by the way. But the percussion, I was trying to pretend that I was Marvin Gaye, and what he would do had he went down to Nashville and did a record with pentatonic harmonies and more of a bluegrass chord structure. So unfortunately, there's no comparison between the minor bluesy chords he was playing and my major bluesy chords, and that's very plain to see for major anyone. Major bluegrassy. Major bluegrassy chords. Very big difference, okay. boss. And that's very plain to see for anyone who can read music. Okay. Yes, sir. Did you get that interview? Yes, I did. Okay. So, um, do you remember before the break, I asked you if Marvin Gaye at all came into your mind at all in the creation of Blurred Lines, mm -hmm. and you said no? Do you remember mm -hmm. that? Yeah. You say in this interview, I was trying to pretend that I was Marvin Gaye. Mm -hmm. So I guess Marvin Gaye did in fact come into your mind. You asked me about Got to Give It Up. I asked you about Got to Give It Up? Yeah, you asked me about Got to Give It Up. So Marvin Gaye came into your mind when you were creating blue, uh, Blurred Lines, but no, not Got when to I Give I It Up. Back, when I look back. Do you see here anywhere where you say when you look back? No, 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 I'm telling you, I'm answering you. Okay. You said, I was trying to pretend that I was Marvin Gaye. When you were creating- The feeling of the music. Hold on. When you were creating Blurred Lines, mm -hmm. were you trying to pretend that you were Mar Marvin Gaye? At that particular time, no. But as I look back, I, I feel that feeling. You did say in this interview, however, that when you were creating Blurred Lines, that you were trying to pretend that you were Marvin Gaye. That's what you said in the interview, correct? And I'm telling you, that was, that's not accurate. And I did say that. Okay, you did say it though. I did say that. Okay. Define a bluegrass chord structure, please. I'm not here to teach you music. Please define it. I'm not here to teach you music. Does that mean you can't do it? No. It means you can do it, you just don't want to? It means I'm not comfortable. 
So then, and if I ask you more questions about that, you'll just keep saying you're not comfortable, right? You just won't answer my question. Bro, whatever you want to do, man. What do you mean by six, eight times signature? Six, eight times signature. What do you mean by that? She knows. I have to tell her to break it down to you. I want you to break it down to me. You don't need me to do that. So you're not going to do you it? You have me at the colleges right there. Does that mean you won't? You can't do it? It means I'm not comfortable, and you have someone that's completely apt and prepared to do it right there beside you. Okay. Define what you meant by pentatonic harmonies. She's right there. So you're not going to answer the question? I'm not comfortable. Are you going to tell me what you meant by t six, eight times signature and what you meant by pentatonic harmonies or not? I'm not comfortable. Are you refusing to answer my question on what you meant by my Listen, man. Course? Listen. You have a musicologist to the left of you. Okay. Are you refusing to answer my question? I'm telling you I'm not comfortable. What would you consider to be the hook of Blurred Lines? Good girl. Did you write any of the vocal lines at all in Blurred Lines? Vocal lines, like what? Just the, vo the lyrics, any of the lyrics. Are they yours? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. The melody sung to the lyrics. Yeah. Okay. Which ones? All of them. Do you believe the bass line in um, Blurred Lines sounds anything like the bass line in Got to Give It Up? I see... I see it when, you know, I see when people say they feel that. I, I understand that. But um, the truth of the matter is, is that, like, you know, you know, Silk and Rayon are two different things. They just feel the same. You said, when you said you wrote all the vocal melodies, did you sing them and teach them to Robin Thicke? Yes. Did you write all the words, too? I'm going to say for the most part, that second verse is a, is, a, is a questionable one because he did ask me to do something high and mm, most of them. <laughs> Whose creation were the words blurred lines? Mine. Whose creation were the words good girl? Mine. Whose creation was the hey, hey, hey used in groups of three? My. I showed you sheet music you before, did. and you couldn't even tell me what notes they were, could you? No, I didn't. So you didn't feel comfortable? Yeah, I didn't feel comfortable. Blurred lines, which is like, blurred lines, which is like everyone's favorite. Like me, my mom, my grandmother, like it crosses generations, and I'm dead serious. But I think it's the Marvin Gaye, like feeling that mm -hmm. with the sample. Did no sample. You, no sample. But no. the is there? Were you inspired by him for that oh, song? Oh, sure. Yeah. Totally. Mm -hmm. But what I tried. See, this is the thing. Mm -hmm. What I tried to do was, I tried to take the feeling that got to got to give it up gave me. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I also tried to do blend in like Southern white Baptist harmonies on the chorus, and then you know. So being dishonest when you give interviews. Um, w when I do, when I give interviews, I tell whatever I want to say to help sell records. With 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 all due respect, I was uh, high and drunk every time I did an interview last year. And Mr. Thick, I, I do have to ask you um, when you when you did the interview that we just played from. VH1, were you drunk and on Vicodin? I was, I, I didn't do a single interview last year without uh, being high on both. Okay. Since yes. Yes. Were you drunk and on Vicodin when you did the Oprah show? Yes. Do you consider yourself an honest person? No. I didn't even use the Marvin Gaye thing until everyone started saying to me, hey, it's reminiscent of the Marvin Gaye song. In quotes, you'll see a statement where Mr. Thick says, quote, Pharrell, Pharrell and I were in the studio making a couple of records, and then on the third day, I told him I wanted to do something kind of like Marvin Gaye's Got to Give It Up. Did uh, he tell you that? No, sir. Okay. That Unfortunately, these questions that you're asking me, 
refer to a portion of our business in the music industry when people come in sometimes to either co-write or when they need songs. Sometimes they embellish those stories. And so what you're hanging your hat on here is a guy that, you know, wants the world to perceive that like, you know, that song is primarily, you know, like his 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 he had the impetus of the genesis for it. But that's not the way I work, A. B Again, I'll just highlight this to you. What you're doing is you're, you're taking excerpts from a conversation of an interview where a guy is presenting to the world that these are his songs. So he's going to say, yeah, I got such and such and such and such and such and such, but that's not the case. I'm happy to answer all these questions, but unfortunately, this is the, this is the, this is the part of it all that just makes it a little confusing for you.